Okay, it is 6.30. We will call the May 1st meeting of the Planning Commission to order and note that there is a quorum. Um, our first item of business is to approve the minutes from March 6th, which copy of which was not in your packet, but we were to look at them online, as I recall. Um, so if anybody has any questions or comments about the March 6th minutes. I move approval of the March 6th minutes. Do you have a second for the approval of the minutes? It was about the solar. No, I'll second. <clears throat> okay, we have a second. All those in favor of approving the March 6th minutes? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Okay, are there any announcements? Mrs. Yepis? Jill will be having announcements. Okay. Then we will move to the first item of business. Item number one is case number P17-022, Copper Leaf number 16, the Starbucks Coffee Company Final Development Plan. And representing the county is Kathleen Hammer. Hi. Good evening, Chair Eek and um, Commissioners. I am here to present um, case P17-022, Copperleaf 16 Starbucks Coffee Cup, or Coffee Company, Final Development Plan. Um, I want to start by saying that um, the applicant did notice this piece of property and that um, notice was sent by mail to residents within 300 feet of the vicinity or of the parcel and, 200, and sent to HOs, HOAs within 200 feet of the parcel. And signage was posted 15 days prior to um, the scheduled hearing tonight. So the Planning Commission does have jurisdiction to make recommendation to the City Council. Board of County Commissioners, pardon me. <laughs> Um, the location of this uh, site is located southeast of the intersection of East Quincy Avenue and South Piccadilly Street. Um, the plan proposes a 2,200 2, square foot building um, with a drive through and directional signage, external seating with tables and chair, chairs, and 27 vehicle parking spaces with landscaped islands and bicycle parking. Um, the staff is reviewing a concurrent plot application, case PAR 17-022, which, if approved by the Public Works, will readjust the lot line to create a parcel, the parcel required for this final development plan. Um, staff reviewed the application um, in comparison to the policies and goals out outlined in the comprehensive plan, and um, the applicant's proposal for a cafe with outdoor seating and a drive through meets the direction provided by the comprehensive plan for urban residential areas. Um, in reviewing the land development code, staff indicated that the proposal complies with the land development code with two exceptions. Um, one of the exceptions being uh, signage. I've explained in the staff report um, using this chart on what was proposed and what um, the LDC requires. Um, the proposed signage plan complies with the permitted overall square footage for the building and the site, however, exceeds the number of signs permitted by the code. Um, the sign proposes six top of building signs on four elevations, and each I would let it be known that each elevation does not exceed the permitted maximum square foot. However, the code la um, the plan is proposing signage that allows the logo and letter height of the LDC. Um, staff does not support the proposed exception to the LDC to allow top of building sites on the south elevation. That's what's directly facing residential. Um, due to the traffic speeds along Quincy, staff supports an increased letter height and logo height. If the applicant removes the two proposed top of building signs on the southwest elevation, um, staff would be more inclined to support a faster sign that is not located at the top of the building on that south side if it's maybe um, more where the windows are placed, something that isn't so visible from residents across the street. Um, moving on from the signs, I can answer any more questions in depth if you have any. Um, the other deviation from the code was um, in regard to lighting. So the code allows um, points 
three port candles for commercial properties. And um, staff acknowledges that the site is included in the proposed smaller commercial center and greater port candles could be warranted. Um, since writing the staff report, the applicant has revised the lighting plan um, in front of you today. They're showing lighting on that south lot line and then further um, than the south light, lot line on the center where the center of the street is proposed, indicating that the light's not going to flow to where those residential lot lines are. There's adequate right of way where the light will not reach those residential areas. So that lighting plan in front of you today is something that staff can support. Um, in your packet are some referral comments if you have any questions of those. And um, staff has visited the site and reviewed the plans and supporting documentation. And based on the review of the policies and goals, has a number of findings. Let it be known that uh, the third finding is likely going to change because the lighting, uh, a new lighting was proposed. Um, considering the findings and other information provided here in staff recommends approval of the case number P17-022, copper leaf number 16, Starbucks Coffee Company, FDP, subject to the four following, five following conditions in your packet. Um, let it be known that site, the staff is requesting that the signage comply strictly with the LDC. So um, that might be an item of discussion because what they are proposing does not. And um, condition number four still stands true with the revised lighting plan. The revised lighting plan needs that condition so that condition can stay or be removed. Um, the applicant has um, a representative here, John from Sterling Designs. Um, he is here to answer any of your questions that you may have. Um, and I can introduce him. I don't believe he has any specific presentation. Did you want to? Are there any questions for Kathleen before she gets down? Okay, we'll direct our questions to the applicant. Sounds good. Good evening. Thanks, Ms. Hammer. Uh, good evening, fellow commissioners. Uh, my name is John Spencer. I'm with Sterling Design Associates out of Littleton. Uh, we're here on behalf of our client, Vertical Construction Management, who is developing this Starbucks. Um, I won't rehash the site plan issues. I think staff uh, went through the site plan pretty well. Again, you know, we're along a developing corridor, and um, this is a great location for Starbucks, so they're looking to, uh, you know, in, improve that commercial center. Um, and so I think to staff's point, uh, with regards to the signage, you guys all have a copy of signage. I did bring some that you guys could look at. I apologize, I didn't, I didn't bring a presentation. Um, but I just wanted to touch on some of the items with regards to the signage. Um, I think if you look if you look at the scale of the building, and we're only talking about a 24 and a half foot uh, height building, uh, we are next to a, a large corridor, and so the signage that we are presenting is, is typical Starbucks signage. The, the logo disc at 60 inches, um, you can see the, the letter height at 22 inches. Again, these sound large when you read the code. However, when you look at the scale of the building, they're really not that that significant. Um, the residential property on the south side, which is the, the main um, question, is, is quite a ways away. So it's not like we're right up against residential. There's a parking lot, there's there's a drive with street trees, landscaping and the like in between there. Uh, so there's, there's quite a bit of area and landscaping that will eventually screen that. Um, the other item I wanted to touch on was with regards to the quantity of the signage. Uh, there are signs that are on there that, that show basically an arrow and a drive-through. That, in our interpretation, was considered uh, more directional signage to alert people that are driving on the roadways or the internal drives of the center that, hey, there's a drive-through over here. The monument sign that's going to be out there will strictly have uh, a logo on it. It does also point... Uh, or alert the, the travelers that there is a, a drive-through. 
Um, so our, our interpretation in the code was that those were directional signs and not considered phasia signs. I think we'd be willing to part with some of those, um, specifically on the south elevation, um, if that's something that the commission would like. Um, and we could also consider lowering those uh, letter signs a little bit lower close to the awnings. Um, those windows are about 10 feet high, so they're really not that high up in the air. Uh, however, I, I wanted to just present those elevations to you so you could see kind of the context and the, and the proportions that we're looking at. Um, they, they sound really large when you read the code, but when you're driving by, uh, they're really, really not. So, um, as, as staff also presented, we, we did we did uh, submit a revised lighting plan to show the reduced numbers uh, of the re the foot candle readings as they cross the right of way. Again, the point one foot candle is about the equivalent of moonlight. So, if you had a moonlit night, that's about how much light would be uh, crossing over the property line there on the south side. I have a question. Sure. Um, in our staff report, it refers to the top of building signs, and I don't see a graphic of any top of the building signs. Does that mean you have eliminated those? Uh, no. I, I think based on the code, and it's, it's a little challenging to understand that code, but the top of building sign, I think, is what those letters are. So where it says Starbucks, that area between the window and the top of the parapet is considered a top of building sign. Okay, and the logo height, I guess that's the variation that really leaped out at me because mm -hmm. the code says it should be 27 inches and you're asking for 60 inches. That's more than twice as big as what mm -hmm. the code permits. So, um, and you're also asking to exceed the lettering height from 18 to 22 inches. Um, are you saying on all your other Starbucks, or is this one different? You're trying to have bigger lettering on this. No, this is pretty typical for them. I mean, sometimes they do get reduced, uh, but this is their standard signage for uh, a roadway such as Arapaho. Or sorry, Quincy. Are there any other questions? I have a question about the lighting. Yes. What time is the facility contemplated to be open until? Like, when is Starbucks closing hours for that location? Um, they typically, I think I brought my operations, they typically start shutting down around 9.30 to 10. Um, the overriding PDP, I believe, uh, requires a reduction in the lighting right. at midnight. Exactly, well, okay, so. that's exactly what I was going to ask okay. you about. Um, if we can, you know, I realize if it's required that it be dimmed at midnight, mm -hmm. it, it would be great if it could be dimmed earlier mm -hmm. um, with the timer um, okay. on the light just to um, make it a little bit better for the residences to the south, okay? Because there are residences and there is light, there is going to be some light pollution, even if it's just a typ typical of a moonlit night. So sure. if when the um, Starbucks closes for mm -hmm. the evenings, like within maybe about a half hour of that, you can dim the lights and not wait until midnight. I think that would that would be a good idea. Okay, they're they're usually pretty ecologically conscious, so they they would probably support that. What is the distance between your building and the houses that are under development or under construction right now? I, I don't know exactly. I don't know. The utility easement there is 40 feet, so it's at least 40 feet. Oh. The utility easement um, on the south side of the property is 40 feet. So that's from the lot line to the south and then the lot line that... So from the lot line of Starbucks to the lot line of the residential. To the end of the utility easement, I can't confirm okay. that there's not another um, tract or piece of land in between that easement and where residential property line start. The, yeah, there there is some landscaping there and some retaining walls. The grade drops down as you go to the south. 
So as soon as you cross track A there, you get to that property line, there's about a six foot space, there's a retaining wall, and then it drops down, and I'm not sure, it's, it's still sloping there, I'm not sure exactly where the residential begins. Mm -hmm. So does your setback to the building, or yeah, to the building from the property line, because that should be added as far as, you know, what we're looking at overall, it looks like you're inside the lot pretty decently. Yeah, we're 165.4 feet from the building to the south property line. That's where most of your lighting is going to be way back there, and then some parking lot lighting, right? Yes. Okay. Are there any other questions? Seeing none, thank you. Thank you. I'll be around if there are more. Caitlin, um, hey, do you have any other comments? Yes, I did just want to clarify in my staff report, I indicated that there were um, six signs proposed, and those were not including the drive-through signage on the building. So each logo is considered a sign, a wall sign, as well as the, word, the lettering Starbucks coffee. So some of the elevations have two signs, not including those drive-through signs. Actually, I have one more question for Chuck. So obviously we have a couple Starbucks in Arapahoe County. Um, how has this been addressed elsewhere in the county? Because the signage is countywide, correct? Right. So the process of the FTP allows deviations from um, the land development code if um, the planning commission and BOCC see them fit. So I, I can't speak to what's been done in the past since I'm rather new, but I know that the FTP process does allow that, and um, it's not uncommon to ask for deviations as part of this process. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Okay, we will now open the public hearing if anybody's here to speak to the Starbucks proposal. Some people signed it. If there's a sign in sheet, yes. So we'll open the public hearing. Thank you. Okay, we have two names Daniel Frank. Do you wish to speak? It says no. Is that true? Okay. And Richard Frank, do you wish to speak? Sure. Always. <laughs> Please come forward and state your name and address. <clears throat> Richard Frank of 7400 East Orchard, Suite 290, Greenwood Village. And um, I'm the developer at Copperleaf for the past uh, 12, 15 years. And we're really excited to uh, have Starbucks. I know there's some new members in Planning Commission here, but I remember many times coming to Planning Commission, you probably <laughs> remember asking us when we're going to have uh, retail, when we're going to have a Starbucks. And um, we uh, are the neighbors in, in Copperleaf are very excited. I had a meeting with Cherry Creek Schools at Mountain Vista Elementary the other day, and they were very excited about it for the teachers and, and so forth. So uh, the, the other thing I would mention to you is your sign code is about 15, 16 years old and uh, really needs updating. And um, I'd hate to lose a Starbucks. I don't know that we would or not, but I'd hate to lose them over the, over the signage issue. Um, the signs that they are proposing are, are pretty much standard around the city. Um, they just happen, don't happen to meet, I guess, 100% of your code. So, ask for your approval. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions of me? No. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Time. Does anybody else wish to speak to the Starbucks? I have one more. I have I have one more question for the Sterling representative, if you would. Is that logo lit at night? It is. Okay. It's internally lit. Um, it, it basically glows. Yeah. I, I, I thought it's it might the green be. disc. I couldn't remember exactly because yeah. I was next door to a Starbucks. Um, but I, I, I was thinking there was some, some backlighting to, to yeah, uh, it's, logos. It's, um, it's basically got an array of LED behind it. Right. So it doesn't really project light, right. but it, but it highlights the, yeah, it's a hollow Okay. Hello, Jessica. Okay, great. Thank you so much. You're welcome.
Nobody else wishes to speak to the public, so we will close the public hearing and bring it back to the Planning Commission. So, Mr. Chaffin. Thank you. Um, so, we just heard that at Sankova's 15 years that day. Is that true? <laughs> Since we're on the next topic tonight is the proposed yeah. sign code amendment. Right. So we're doing these out of order. So according to the, the regulations, Jason Ralph was planning, uh, the code was adopted in 2001 and readopted in 2010, though there were not substantive changes to the sign code when it was readopted in 2010. So it's certainly uh, close to... 15, 18 years old. Okay, so this sign code amendment is only for the Supreme Court case. It does not change any of the signs on the building. That is correct. It only addresses uh, content neutrality. It doesn't address dimensional standards like how big signs can be. Okay. And then I'm sort of struck by this issue of having Starbucks all over Arapahoe County and and we can't say whether this is in line with those ones that have already been approved or not. Right, certainly. Commissioner, uh, just looking at uh, the map online here, I'm not identifying any Starbucks that are actually in unincorporated areas. So I, it's hard to say. A lot of them are in Greenwood Village or Centennial. However, I'm not seeing any in the E-470 area that are in unincorporated, and I can also search in the four square mile area. Parker Road, Nihilus. Yeah. Oh, actually, I have a question for uh, Jason also. So, Jason, how often do we get requests for variances against the sign code? Um, in this area, the most recent one I recall is the McDonald's that's uh, located north of Quincy Avenue. They did receive some relief from sign regulations, though the specific relief I can't recall without looking up the case. But the Planning Commission recommended and the Board of County Commissioners did approve some modifications to the sign code. Thank you. And Jason, if you remember, I don't know if you do or not, so if I'm testing your memory too much, just let me know. Um, was that McDonald's adjacent to residential property? Um, no, that was uh, sort of at the southern end of the – there's a 7-Eleven just north across the street, and then there's an entire commercial center uh, and the Walmart neighborhood center between that McDonald's and the residential. Thank you very much. Any other mm -hmm. questions for staff? Any other comments? About Starbucks. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion. Very good. Uh, in the case of P17-022, Copper Leaf, number 16, Starbucks Coffee Company, FDP, the commissioners have read the staff report. We find ourselves in agreement with the staff findings, including all plans and attachments set forth in the staff report dated April 19, 2018. Recommend approval of these applications subject to the following conditions. One, prior to signature of the file copy of these plans, the applicant must address public work staff comments and concerns. Two, approval of the application P17-022, Copperleaf number 16, Starbuck Copy Company, FDP, is conditioned on the approval of Copperleaf filing number 16, Replat, which will establish the lot depicted in the P17-022 FDP. I propose striking number three. Four, outdoor lighting must not exceed 0.3 foot candles as measured from the residential lot lines to the south parcel. Five, the applicant must follow Excel Energy and Public Service Company of Colorado standards for improvements within easements. Do we have a second for the motion? All second. Mr. Bromwell seconds the motion. Any other comments? I, I am still having trouble with too many deviations from the existing sign code. I think Starbucks has a, a well-known logo and brand, and everybody knows it's coming. It will advertise itself. So. Oh, I was going to say I agree with the signs. I know I my first case with the McDonald's, and they didn't seem to have that many signs. <laughs> they don't have that many? Signs? I don't remember that many signs on the building when they did it. And I know they didn't have the drive through everywhere. They were all down low. Right. When I, I do recall there was another case, I believe it was in Copperleaf, where there was a sign modification of that Mavericks 
the uh, gas station convenience. They had some, and they were adjacent to residential. And I do recall there were signage discussions, and we did grant some leeway there. I do not recall that. Okay. So I think I voted against that. You are <laughs> in keeping with the sign, the county sign restrictions. Uh, yeah, I guess I would like to see that reduced or keeping that. Okay. Okay, we need, we have had a second for the motion, um, so we need to vote on the motion as presented. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Aye. Three opposed. Four, Four opposed. Correct. Would you like to make a Sub motion? Substitute motion? Yes, motion. I think we can make another motion with shorter signs. In the case of P17-022, Copperleaf Number 16, Starbucks Coffee Company, FDP, the commissioners have read the staff report. We find ourselves in agreement with the staff findings, including all plans and attachments as set forth in the staff report dated April 19, 2018, and recommend approval of these applications subject to the Five conditions listed in the staff report. Second the motion, Madam Chair. Okay, we have a second for the mo motion. All those in favor of the second motion? Aye. 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 Four people in favor and all those opposed? They've already voted. Okay, <laughs> we carry. Four people were approved. Uh, yeah. No, we actually it's all no, it was yeah, motion yeah. passed seven zero. Yeah. Yeah. Seven zero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no problem with service. Okay, I guess that is the end of the Starbucks proposal, and our next item is the study session to discuss the sign regulation. So Jason and Kathleen from the county will go over the sign proposal. Good evening. Um, tonight before you is um, a study session in regards to the sign um, regulation section 12-300 of the Arapahoe County Land Development Code um, to comply with the co Supreme Court's decision in the Reed versus Town of Gilbert. Um, the decision in that court case was determined that sign regulations cannot restrict signage based on the content of the sign. Um, as we spoke about earlier, um, and just to reiterate, the sign, the, ch the changes proposed in front of you tonight um, are not restricting, restricting any dimensional standards such as setbacks, height, or size limitations. They're just taking out um, the content, or making the sign more content neutrality, neutral. Um, your staff report indicates um, an example of a content-based sign regulation. And um, it's, for example, like a for sale sign. Um, the code, as it is today, calls out for sale signs and how long they're, or garage sale signs, and they're permitted to be this size, this height, up for this length of time. The, cho the changes we're permitting or proposing tonight are more so um, eliminating what type of sign and calling those signs temporary signs. So whether it be a for sale, whether it's a for sale or come to my birthday party, those signs are all regulated the same. What is, what is temporary? Uh, I actually received this question a little bit before the meeting. And um, in a residential district, it's 90 consecutive days in a calendar year. Um, that's on page four of the proposed code, uh, which could uh, it's, it depends on how long the house is on the market or. Uh, how long somebody wants to leave up their political sign after the election? Or Every time we discuss the sign code, I bring this up. I want to ban on all political signs. Yeah. 
I second that. <laughs> I think you have a lot of sympathy there. <laughs> Anyone with the Supreme Court. Court. <laughs> I don't suppose we can put that in. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of a violation of personal yeah, property. It could, yeah, could, like could be a little, little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, your HOA will control the home. Now, one. I think the, the overall intent here is this is just as mentioned to bring our code into compliance so we're not risking a lawsuit um, under the Reed versus Gilbert case. However, I think the long-term plan is to revisit the sign code, do more substantive modifications to update it to, on some of those details that you know, we heard about uh, tonight and, and otherwise. But for now, it's just, you know, let's get it in compliance with federal law. I mean, that Supreme Court case, when I looked it up, the decision was rendered in 2015. Has, has it created problems for the county? We've been a little bit slow in reacting to it. Let's just say that. We haven't had any. We haven't been sued. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You're trying to be proactive. In yeah. Event. Eventually it, it will happen. You know, until it must be. <laughs> okay. Can someone apply for, like, you use the example of the house doesn't sell within 90 days. Can someone apply for an extension for an additional 90 days? Has anyone ever done that? Or do they just need to take it down for a day? Yeah, and then right. put it back up, which yeah. we've seen that done. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which are, uh, what, what yeah, or we for now. Yeah, the, the code does say any temporary sign erected for a period not to exceed 90 consecutive days right. so in a year. And that accommodates someone who's having a really hard time selling their house, for example. Uh, it hasn't been happening in this market much. So then you also say that you haven't been, there's, no, there's, there's been no litigation brought in this year, nobody, you know, you've not had any issues. Is it because the county's fairly convenient? Well, part of it is we've been circumspect about what we enforced since the case came out. I have a question, you know, regarding the, the referral comments. So I'm not sure that, you know, at this point you're trying to incorporate any of that feedback since it's not specific to you know, complying with court case. But I had a question regarding IREA's recommendation about not installing within utility easements. Because that could wipe out half of someone's front yard. So I was curious as to whether or not that was something that's in the sign code. Yeah, I mean, or if it applies to permanent signs versus temporary. Uh, you know, if that would ban pretty much any yard sign from being in most of your yard, unless you're on a very large property. Right. Uh, generally, easements prohibit permanent structures from being in them. If it were, you know, the for sale sign and Excel just happened to be doing work along the street frontage, it could easily be relocated in that situation. Um, yeah, and, and generally when issuing sign permits, you know, we're looking for easements and things that they should not be located in if they're a permanent structure. Yeah, that's done. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, welcome. Well, Jason, on that one, it talks about flags and banners are prohibited that wave flat, but they must they comply with this section. What's the difference in that section? What page are you on? Yeah, uh, six. It's just a little Unless they comply. They know the difference of the different flags that could flap. And Yeah, so the, the sections being referenced there are specifically, there's some sections about um, about flags and the, the size of flags. And I 
And I believe one of those other sections is the feather flags section, which are those uh, sort of almost teardrop-shaped flags that you often see outside apartment complexes. I believe those are the sections referenced there. I can look that up. So one section being referenced is a, a banner, 12-306.05, uh, just references banners. Um, so it's saying that you know, things that flap have, would have to comply with that section as well. Yeah, and then 306.07 is flags or banners on, on light poles, which are the, the types of things you'll often see in, like, an entertainment district where they'll hang the two flags on either side of a light pole for decorating. Some of the restrictions are, you know, so it doesn't blow into the right away. Right. Right. Yeah, that came up in Inverness. They wanted to put the signs in the median, and I think they turned it down because it was going to be a... Traffic hazard. Yeah, there's. Maybe I, I just remember we had discussion about it. Yeah, and the, the Inverness, they have what's called a planned sign program, which is largely being imported into this code as it exists today. And they did have an element that was in the medians. And actually, if you drive Dry Creek in the Centennial right of way, um, yes. it's being installed or has been installed. It has been installed, at least in part. Yeah, it's, it's pretty weird looking, but. This is my personal opinion. Okay. So is there anything else that's being proposed as a change that, that you view as definitively different, or is this pretty standard? Well, it, it carries over the dimensional standards from our current code. It's just really trying to strip out all of the references to uh, content within a sign um, and it does result in some sections of the code that if you read them just it sounds like what what exactly are we dancing around here what are we talking about but it's it's really because we're trying to strip out the content that some of the definitions get a little longer and there's things like you know flags if they're government flags or nation or, or something uh, political signs versus real estate signs versus just yard signs. So we landed on just yard signs, basically. Um, and there could be another Supreme Court decision that totally undoes this and we'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's right over the horizon. <laughs> okay. That's right. So it's really the content that is directing that. Right. Any other questions? So, so when were you thinking of studying the entire sign code in terms of what sections may need updating? I personally, I would love to get on that this year. It's it's something that you know we have needed to update, and some members of planning commission may remember an AT and T sign request uh, on I twenty five. Uh, where someone had to change a final development plan to allow, uh, you know, a fairly, you know, what appears in context of the building to be a fairly reasonably sized sign. And it was approved, but it had to go through a final development plan process. Whereas if we were following Centennial sign code, for example, and setting aside the IKEA sign, <laughs> the more standard Centennial signs, uh, it could have been approved just by getting a sign permit. Uh, oh. So there's... There's examples where our code may be overly restrictive in some situations. For example, along I-25, our sign code doesn't, it just says, if you're close to the right-of-way, you have to have a really tiny sign, which is probably not appropriate for that corridor. Now, on the other hand, we don't want necessarily an IKEA sign on every site or that old Quest sign uh, from, <laughs> <laughs> from out of space. Yes. Yeah. So, but, yeah, I would I would love to get that, you know, at least a study session in front of you this year to 
start talking about changes to the sign code for yeah. dimensional standards. How does our sign code in Arapahoe County compare, you know, like you mentioned, Centennial to kind of surrounding jurisdictions? Um, it, without having done all of the research on dimensional standards, Centennial is more generous. I'll just you know, say that. Um, the sign code I worked with previously, I worked for the town of Castle Rock, in some ways was more generous and in other ways was less. For example, Castle Rock allowed a certain amount of square footage of signage per building frontage. Uh, you could cover 30% of every wall with signage, uh, but you also had a limitation on total square footage based on your lot frontage. So, for example, you you know, you wouldn't be able to actually cover 30% of any all the walls. Uh, I will say that sign codes are unique to every jurisdiction, and uh, it tends to be, um, you know, difficult for sign companies, too, because every jurisdiction has completely different standards. I mean, you think of, you know, the signs in downtown Breckenridge. Those are very, very <laughs> You know, precisely regulated, but that's not necessarily the direction we would go for a different community. Well, I can certainly understand when you're in a commercial corridor, yeah. your standards would be different, which is what you were referring to. But, you know, my concern, as you can see, was brought out this evening, is I'm really protective of communities that abut smaller kinds of strip developments. So they don't, they're not, they don't have, experience sign pollution or the light pollution that accompanies the signs because that does that does happen and you know and we're talking especially about a fairly small strip center that shouldn't be disruptive to the new um, I think they I don't know whether they're uh, single family homes or multi family hair yeah. that are developed there it's like you know Turn down the lights and, and you know, your, your big LED, like, emblem on the side of it, that really doesn't need to be facing, facing all the yeah. <laughs> yeah. You think you'd want it on Quincy or Piccadilly? No. No. Well, someday we'll see the Starbucks and then we'll know. Yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> they're, they're not it's ubiquitous everywhere high. else, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You think what is Starbucks? Can we limit the number of Starbucks in the United States? That's what I want to do. Speaking of which, the Iliff and Parker Starbucks is in Aurora's jurisdiction. Yeah, yeah, the commercial charter. <laughs> so there we go. Anything we go. goes. Right yes, now. but the apartment building kitty corners in Arapahoe. Yeah. Stay up all night long drinking coffee. <laughs> yeah. right. yeah. can't well, thank you. We'll be bringing this for an actual public hearing very soon. So. <laughs> very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I guess thank the you. meeting is closed and adjourned. Thank you.